Good afternoon, morning, lunchtime. Depends really where you are when you're listening to us. Welcome back to Beyond Indigo's Facebook Live. My name is Kelly Baltzell. I'm the CEO and owner of Beyond Indigo Pets. Today we have our most wonderful um, PPC analyst, the lead, um, Michael Platt, here. He has some more insight for us. Um, we're grateful to have him here on this May 11th. So welcome, Michael. Hello, it's good to be back. Thank you. Yeah, you have some new information for us, so that's pretty exciting. But let's see what Google has for us first, because Google's making more changes per normal. Google changes. We keep telling people this, Google changes on an average of three to five times a day, and that's what they're willing to admit. So Google has decided now that it needs to verify everybody. So, and this could take a couple of years. We're starting to see it with some of our clients. But basically, if you do Google ads, Google's going to say, hey, are you really you? And they're going to ask for some documentations. Kind of what we're seeing right now is the business EIN number, as well as submitting um, a W-9. So it's not like mounds and mounds of paperwork you have to submit to Google, but it is something. So if you see this pop up for you, this is legit. Google is doing this. Um, it's probably starting with Whatever pattern it makes sense, United States, Europe, um, higher accounts, lower accounts, we never know quite the rhythm of why Google chooses who to roll out their um, new changes to, but it makes sense to them. And of course, we our choice is you either play by Google's rules or you don't play. So keep an eye on this, but again, it might be a couple of years until you see it, but it's rolling out now. So that's the new Google News. Michael, what are you seeing on our platforms what are you seeing like when you're doing like we were talking you and i were kind of geeking out because you and i both like behavioral data analysis and we like talking about what people are doing and then we you know we get deep in the numbers what have what patterns have you been seeing lately well uh the last time i was here uh, a few weeks ago we talked about how pet owners searching google for non-essential veterinary services like grooming and boarding those search numbers had declined due to the pandemic, yet Google searches for an emergency veterinarian remained steady. So we worked with our clients and moved advertising budget away from boarding and grooming and onto targeting these searches for emergency veterinarians. That way we'd be putting our clients hospital names in front of people searching Google for an emergency vet. Then our clients get more website video uh, visitors, more phone calls, more new clients. Uh, it's one way we adapted. Well, at the end of March and throughout April to today, there has been a sharp increase in Google searches for pet grooming. And I'm sure this won't come as too much of a surprise to some animal hospitals as they've been experiencing a notable rise in grooming calls. There has been nothing like this for at least the last five years. Not only the sharp increase in searches for pet grooming, but the number of searches is at an all time high. I theorize this could be because people are staying at home more and maybe noticing Fluffy is a bit stinky. They're noticing that their pet's nails could use some attention. If your hospital offers grooming, now is the time to advertise on Google that you do. Uh, because people are searching for it now more than ever. And if you have some grooming competition in your area, area also advertising on Google, advertise a special, 15% off pet grooming receive a free nail trim with a grooming session. Uh, that would be a great way to take clicks away from your competition. The idea is to capitalize on this interest, to place your hospital's name in front of as many local pet owners who are searching the internet for a service that you provide, showing them your hospital's name at the very moment they're searching. And again, being there for a pet owner during this time when their vet wasn't there for them, that's something they won't forget. Totally. I mean, it really is making lasting impressions right now. I was trying to think about like the words and I saw more of an image in my head about that, but it really is about who are you connecting to now? You will always remember this. Like, you know, like I, t I enjoy talking to my elders throughout my life. And so like I talked to my grandparents 
And I talked to my mother about major impactful times that were before I was born. So like my mom says, I can tell you exactly where I was when John F. Kennedy died. Like and where I heard about it, right? Like she goes, I can tell you exactly what I felt, what I was wearing, where I was sitting, what I was doing, because that moment was so impactful. And this moment's impactful now too, but this is a longer moment than like a single president's death, right? So you're going to still remember, like you said, well, they were there to help my dog or me when I just needed my house clean again. Like it just needed my dog groomed. I needed to be able to see his eyes. It was over the click, click, click on the floors. So you needed a mani pedi, you know, whatever it is, you're right. And I, and I, don't think we expected that data. I don't think we expected that to go up as much, right? Not at all. No, I mean, we in our discussions internally, that wasn't like, hey, we're going to see this rise in pet grooming, and now we are, right? So um, it's a thing. It's a thing. So it's good to know. That's really great. Thank you for oh, that information. Welcome. Now, we were talking about you know, our segment marketing to self, like positive messages. And then you and I got kind of talking about the weather and what we do and kind of what we want to tell people today is get out and enjoy the outdoors wherever you are. Now you live in Arizona, which to me means you live in a frying pan. (laughs) It's too too hot. I don't know how you do it, but what do you do in the mornings that you said before the heat hits? Right. Early in the morning before the heat comes in, uh, I like to go out on some bicycle trails, go bike riding. I take my camera with me. And, you know, in the early morning when the sun's starting to peak up over the mountains, uh, that's when the birds start to uh, become more active. And so I like to to photograph birds while I I get my good morning exercise in. That's wonderful. Well, you know, I'm directly north and a little bit to the right in Minnesota. And I went even further north because it's that time of year in Minnesota. We get out on Mother's Day weekend. We're, we're done. Um, it snowed. And so, but we still were out there just enjoying probably the last snowstorm of the season. You know, we may have been seeing a few hallelujahs along with it. Um, but so we're kind of, we love snow, but we're ready for it to be done. So it, it was good. It was good. It was just a little astonishing to see snow and see wow. it stick. Yeah. 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 Yeah, and here uh, some weird weather stuff going on. You know, it's already over a hundred degrees just into May, and I mean we're seeing like July weather, like you know, deep in the summer weather, really early this year. So we're all kind of a little uh, scared of what the summer is going to be like here. Yeah, I, I wouldn't survive. It would be too hot. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, Michael, for being here today. Um, Keep an eye on the data and we'll have you back once you see some more interesting trends that we can share with everybody. Sounds good. I look forward to it. Thank you. Thank you so much.